Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have a knife on the review table that, to be totally honest with you guys, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get one of these in hand because I have some things to say about it. Um, what we have here is the Benchmade Narrows. I'm sure a lot of you probably know about it. This is a uh, highly discussed knife for, uh, unfortunately, mostly bad things. And, um, I, you know, I work with a handful of retailers. At the time, I wanted to get one of these in hand. No one really had them in stock. So I threw something out there on Instagram. I said, hey, does anyone have a Benchmade Narrows um, they could send me for review? Just don't be offended by some of the things I might say about it. And uh, my buddy Dave over at American Edge reached out to me and said, hey, we got one. You can check it out if you want. So I want to thank Dave and I want to thank American Edge for uh, supplying me this to uh, to give you guys a review of. Also, American Edge, they're a smaller, I would say definitely a smaller uh, knife retailer up in Minnesota. Um, they actually have a great selection of knives, a great selection of a lot of other knives you should consider buying over this Benchmade Narrows here. Um <laughs> We're already starting the bashing of this knife here. Um, this is an honest review, though, and I do have some good things to say about it. Um, it is not all going to be sunshine and rainbows, but there are a couple nice things about this knife. But I'm going to give you guys my full, unadulterated, unedited opinion of what this knife is. So uh, sit back, hold on to something, and... Uh, Let's go! But before we get into this, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length coming in at 8.02 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.44 inches, and a blade thickness at a very thin 76 thousandths. Blade material on this guy is M390. We have a drop point style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.58 inches, and a handle thickness, um, as you probably all know, very, very thin, 275 thousandths. We'll put some, we'll give you some other aspects to look at this to give you a better idea of just how thin that is. Um, and then we also have a handle material of titanium with a crossbar locking mechanism. I'm not sure if this is still considered the axis lock. Um, may or may not be. Let me know in the comments. It is definitely some type of crossbar lock. I just, I, it doesn't really look like an axis lock to me, but maybe they could consider it still to be an axis lock. I don't know. User of right or left hand. So lefties, <laughs> you get some expensive love, but you got a little more love here. Um, a weight at a also very, very light for this size of a knife, 2.41 ounces, stupid light, uh, not stupid in a bad way. This, this is actually stupid in a good way. 2.41 ounces is a very impressive, uh, light weight for this knife, but the price is not light. A lot of you probably know this, but this knife is coming in at $522, 522 bucks. So yeah, there's that. Now, let's do some size comparisons. And for this video, because I'm going to be put a lot of emphasis on this outrageous price, we're not bringing any Chinese Chinese knives and all the Chinese companies that are having a seat today. We're not talking about any of them. I like a lot of them. I love a lot of them, but we're not talking about them. Today is all American made. We're going to keep this as apples to apples as we can to be as fair as we can to Benchmade. Uh, so let's bring in a couple here. Here is the Hogue Deca Magna Cut Steel. Um, I kind of modded this one up. Um, these range anywhere from, I believe, 120 ish some dollars up to 180 ish I think. Um, but yeah, Magna Cut Steel. Uh, so yeah, American made. Uh, yeah, 100, 120 to 100 and we'll say $80. Um, and then we also have... The amazing Spider Co Shaman. This is S3V. This is another one that I kind of doctored up. Um, but I originally bought these scales from the Krukarta version. The Krukarta version, or er, Crewware, the Crewware bladed version of this, I believe was $220. Now that was a couple years ago, three years ago, I think. So inflation, yeah. But still $220. Uh, for an American-made Spider Co. with a very high-end steel that was crew wear. This I've obviously changed it out. Um, so there you go. As you can see, measures up pretty well with the Shaman. A little bigger than the Deca. 
We'll get these out of the way. And we're gonna bump it up in materials and overall time and, and money with these next two. And we're gonna take a look at this guy right here. This is the TRM Atom, also American made. Titanium handles, just like the Renero's. Um, contoured titanium, milled all over the place. CPM 20 CV blade, which is for all intents and purposes, basically the same steel as M390. Um, and we're looking at, for the scales and the knife, I believe we're looking at about 400 ish dollars. I think 400 ish dollars, if I remember right. Um, so yeah, we're still $122 less than the Titanium Atom. And uh, one last little banger here. This is the best deal you'll probably see all day. Um, the Knifeworks exclusive Ritter Hogue, full size, milled carbon fiber with Magna Cut steel. This was like 220 to 250 bucks. I can't remember actually. Uh, I was really lucky to get one. Um, the minis were 200, so I'm assuming this was 220-ish to 250-ish. Let me know if you remember the price of this in the comments, but, uh, there you go. There's all your American-made knives that are coming in well, well, well under 522 bucks. Um, and I could make a very strong argument that both of these knives, um, ultimately have more time into it than this one. Not from an R&D standpoint, but just from a manufacturing standpoint. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Uh, I don't think I am. Anyway, not to sound, yeah. We're getting in the weed. Let, let's keep going here. I'm getting worked up, and we're not. We're like a third of the way through this video. Um, but there's your size comparisons. Now, the reason I wanted to bring out all American-made knives um, in, in more premium high-end uh, materials is to get a very good comparison of those to this um, because there really is no comparison in terms of quality, craftsmanship, uh, aesthetics, every one of those knives are either on par or better than this Narrows here. And, and if any of you have handled those knives, I'm willing to bet you'd probably agree with me, especially when you factor in those price tags. Uh, the, the, the price really does break this knife. It really does. There's some other real issues with this knife that we're going to go over here very quickly. Um, but I also want to really hammer into everybody. I don't just dislike this knife for the price. The price is a huge aspect of it, but there's a lot of other issues going on here than just the price. So I want to be very clear with that. But let's start talking about it now. Let's, let's get into that honest review and let's start with the blade here. Now the blade, the blade itself, only the blade is actually the one part that I actually do like on this knife. Um, we're looking at a behind the edge reading of 13 thousandths. Now, I'm also going to be very honest with you guys. As you guys know, American Edge sent this to me. So I have not really carried it and used it, used it to its full potential because um, I, I just can't. Um, but all I did was run this through some paper like I do with all my knives out of the box. Uh, razor sharp edge on this guy, 13 thousandths. This is by far the sliciest knife, the sliciest bench made I've ever handled. Like by far, very, very slicey knife. Um, that's a good thing. I look for that in a knife. Um, as a matter of fact, I meant to bring these out earlier, but we'll do this too, just to prove that I'm not just a Benchmade hater. These are the Benchmades that I personally own and truly do enjoy. Um, I got my Mini Adamas here, my Benchmade 940, and my Benchmade Bug Out that I did my own uh, little mod handle mod with. I put these scales on, put them together, and I actually had this 940 in my pocket when I asked my wife to marry me. So... I have a history with Benchmade. Like, I like Benchmade. I'm not trying to just run Benchmade into the ground, but I want to express my true thoughts on this knife and, and how, I guess, offended in a way I am by it. I, I really am kind of offended in it by a way. Um, but anyway, those are the Benchmades I own. And they're not going anywhere. I really like them. Like, Benchmade does make some really, really good knives. Um, that's not one of them, but they do make some good knives with actually some pretty decent offerings, but it seems like all those prices are going up. So we'll, we'll see how that goes in the future and kind of keep tabs on what Ben's made is doing from a pricing standpoint. Um, but we're going to go back to focus on this again, back to the blade. Like I said, nice 13,000 behind the edge, very, very slicey, and it does have a very nice sharpening choil and a plunge grind, uh, nice thin plunge grind. Nice, deep, sharpening choil. So yeah, there's there's a lot of good aspects to this blade, which 
in all honesty, you should expect for $522. Um, it's one of those things you, you, you're happy to see it, but you shouldn't be overly blown away because you're paying $522. You should be very satisfied with it. Um, blade centering. For $522, um, I really think the blade should come centered. This is out of the box, guys. This is this is literally out of the box, brand new. Um, blade centering's off. So that yeah, that's I have a problem with that for five hundred twenty-two dollars. Um, my bug out is the blade centering's off. But again, this, this is also something I put together. It could be something I did. Um, but here I have my nine forty centered to just about perfection maybe not perfect and then i have my mini adamas also centered very well so for 522 dollars i expect the blade to be centered very well it's not that sucks another thing that really sucks that should never ever ever happen on a 522 dollar knife is this right here this uh little blemish in the anodizing 522 dollars you should never see that i guarantee you if you bought a Chris Reeve Sabenza that had the blue studs. Now they may wear over time, that's that's possible, but you would never get a Chris Reeve knife with a blemish. And again, is it unfair to compare a $550 Chris Reeve Sabenza to a $522 Benchmade? No, it's not because they're close enough in price range and they're both American made. Hell, you could drive from Benchmade to Chris Reeve and Probably, I don't know, 12 hours, 14 hours, something like that. I, not that far. So, yeah, there shouldn't be probably less than that. I'd have to look at a map. But, yeah, 8, 10 hours, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, you shouldn't have that issue. That you should never have an anodizing blemish on a $522 knife. Um, yeah, is what it is there. But ultimately, the, the, the edge and the performance of this blade, and again, the performance that I'm kind of assuming we're going to get from M390, because I haven't really used this hard. I've just ran through some paper, but it really like went through that paper like butter. Um, so very nice edge, very nice blade. I like that. Really hate the off-centering, and I can't stand that you have an anodizing blemish there on a $522 knife. Going into the handle, this thing feels like a rock. And what I mean by that is, have you guys ever went to the beach and picked up, like, I like to skip rocks. When I go to a lake or the beach, I'm a rock skipper. I like to skip rocks more than I do lay on a beach or do anything else. I love skipping rocks. So I pick up the flattest rocks I can find. And a shale rock is a very flat rock. You guys ever handled a shale rock? I guarantee you, you've seen it. Um, I'm not a rock expert by any means. I actually had to Google shale rock to make sure I was talking about the same rock I was envisioning. But that's what I'm talking about, is a shale rock. And this thing is so skinny, so thin, it feels literally like a rock in your hand. And it also feels like that because the shape is like this area up here. You can't really use it as a choil because it's not flat enough up here. So it's, it's awkward. So you have to just go back here to hold on to it. And I'm just, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's four fingers for me, but I'm just getting on there. I'm kind of feeling the end of the handle here. It just doesn't feel good in hand. Very, very thin. And let's do a comparison of just how thin this is. Here is your TRM Atom. And let's do, I'm gonna, as best as I can. Again, I'm trying to be, yeah, that's, that's totally flat. Look at that. Look at that difference in thickness between the Atom, which is a very thin knife, and the Snarrows. Uh, let's also bring in the Bug Out here with, of course, aftermarket scales. So it's going to be, um, thicker, but as you can see, a huge, huge difference in thickness. Maybe uh, there we go in thickness between the Benchmade Bug Out and this narrow. So, yeah, it's just too thin. It what Benchmade did here, it's like they took the advantages of what a good thin handle does for a knife. And they took it to such an extreme that, in turn, made it more of a novelty than a true, comfortable, regular-use EDC knife. Like, this is not a knife I would want to carry every day because it's just too thin. It doesn't feel comfortable when I hold it in hand. Um, now, with that being said, I will say I'm very surprised that with these thin scales, you actually have... Pretty strong handle. There's a little flex there. You have to, with as thin as this is, I mean, my God, you have to expect some flex. Um, but overall, with the little amount of flex, largely in part due to the, these well-spaced standoffs in the back, I like how they put them far enough apart to where you get some good, you do get some good um, 
strength here in terms of like when I squeeze on this handle, I don't really feel, I don't feel the handle flexing that much. So that was actually a nice surprise. I do kind of like that. Um, I will also say that these crossbar studs here, these crossbar lock studs or axis lock studs, whatever you want to call them, I really like these. Um, I really, really like these. Uh, they're very, very nice to use. They add a good fidgety element to the knife that I really enjoy. Um, but again, does a special stud really make this knife a $522 knife? No, it doesn't. It, 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 makes, it makes it kind of enjoyable to use, but it, not in my wildest dreams does it make this a $522 knife. If this is the first time they use this and they took a lot of R&D time to, 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 to develop these and develop the innards of the knife, I, I understand that time went into developing this, but that's also another knock I heard from a lot of people is they just like dumped all of their R&D costs into the knife and instead of trying to get it back slowly, they're trying to get it back really quick up front. Um, that's, I think, going to really bite them in the butt. If that's what they're trying to do, I don't know that for sure. I don't work at Benchmade. Um, but I did hear that, and it made a lot of sense to me, so I wanted to point that out. But I do like these studs. Um, then you get back here, and you have this clip. And cue the outrage, because you know what it is? It's an effing bug-out clip. It's a Benchmade bug-out clip on a $522 knife. You took a $135 Benchmade clip, a $135 clip from a bug out, not a $135 knife, and you're taking that clip, putting it on this knife and saying, it's a $522 knife. You are out of your mind, Benchmade. You are absolutely on something. For $522, I seriously expect some type of milled clip. I mean, something, something different, something unique to this knife. Freaking Benchmade, I, I, that's outrageous to me. I mean, that is literally outrageous that they use a bug out clip on a $522 knife. Like, okay, we're gonna move on because I, I don't wanna start swearing. I wanna keep this, I wanna keep this kid friendly. So we're gonna keep going here. We're gonna go into the action. Um, the action is very smooth. It, it truly is, no, no pun intended, very, very smooth action. Um, but not necessarily great action because if you go to, yeah, you see that it's, you can push it out, but it's very, very, it's, it's just very blah, very, very blah. There's obviously little to no detent because of the spring and the lock system. But again, you shouldn't be able to do this. Like, that shouldn't happen. I, I, it shouldn't. It just, it's way too easy to shake this blade out. Um, I promised I wasn't going to talk about Chinese knives, or I could show you 15 to 20 crossbar locks that are solid. Oh, but I do have the DECA here. Let's pull the DECA out. Let's see if the DECA does it. No, it, it, you hear it. You hear it start to come out a little, but it, it holds. But not, not the Narrows. Not the Narrows. The Narrows fails that test. Um, it fails a lot of tests. But that loose spring, there's like little to no tension on the spring. Um, yes, you can deploy the blade, but it's, it's not a satisfying action. And you do too much of that. You do way too much of that right there. I did that when I first pulled this out of the box. I, that's all I did for the first day. I had to really, you have to make a real considered effort to, to put force behind the thumb studs and barely get it out there. Um, it's just not good. Uh, again, 522 bucks. It's, it's pretty pathetic. It is very smooth though. I will say the the bearings, I think they're using wider bearings in here. Like I said, I'm not going to take this thing apart because it's not mine, but I'm almost positive they're using wider bearings, slightly wider bearings, which would explain some of the extra smoothness. Um, yeah, there's some precise milling and some pre pre precise engineering behind this, but there's also precise engineering behind this and this and even this. I mean, none of these... You almost have to add these up to get a little over the $522 price tag. Like, it's just, it's insane to me. It doesn't make any sense. 
It makes absolutely no sense. So at the end of the day, what we have here um, is what I do truly think a very nice blade, but overall a, a terrible knife with a downright offensive price, like an absolute offensive price. This knife is seriously a careless slap to the face of the knife community. Um, it's Benchmade basically throwing their you-know-what's on the table and saying, we just don't care. We're Benchmade. We know you're going to buy it anyway. That's that's how this knife makes me feel. Um, it's, it's just terrible. So, yes, very nice blade. Terrible knife at an offensive price. Benchmade, rethink this one. Really rethink this one. And to be totally honest, to be totally fair, even if this knife was $250, I personally still wouldn't buy it. Well, I wouldn't have nearly as many problems with it. I still wouldn't really want to buy it because it's just not a comfortable EDC knife. The only person that's going to buy these and enjoy it is a true diehard Benchmade collector. That's it. That's it. And maybe Benchmade made just 200 of these things and they already sold out of them. I don't know. I'm assuming they made more than 200. But, you know, they could probably make 1,000 and they'll probably sell them to... Crazy people, I, I don't know, no offense if you bought one of these, um, but yeah, it just makes absolutely no sense to me. Benchmade is a lot better than this, and I hope to see it, because this just sucks. Everything about this sucks, um, other than the blade is actually kind of nice, but yeah. That's it, guys. I'm done. I feel relieved. I feel, I feel like I have some weight off my shoulders. Again, a huge thank you to American Edge for sending me this knife. Guys, definitely hop in the link below. Check out to see what American Edge has in stock. They have a lot of good offerings. Um, maybe some offerings you would struggle to find at other places that are a little more well-known about. So be sure to look them up. Benchmade, yeah, I'm done with you for a while. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.